Hey, happy Monday. It's Tracy and I'm here in um, in the Bre Brexville Metro Parks. I'm down at the River Ford, which is one of my favorite places. I spent a lot of time here with my kids when they were little, playing in the water and um, going home muddy with pockets full of rocks and special little twigs and pieces and parts. And um, it brings back good memories. Feels good to be here today. And it's the spring equinox, so it's the day in the year where day and um, darkness and light are equal, same, same, and it's the turning point from the old astrological calendar, the end of Pisces, into the new calendar, the beginning of Aries, and um, it's nice to remember those cycles and to have a moment to check in with that, make sure you're moving forward and continuing to grow and examine yourself and um, participate in your life and not becoming complacent or um, lethargic or habitual in how you are keeps us young, keeps us young and fresh. So um, let's see what the word box has to offer us. Um, let's see what we can anchor to this week, gain inspiration from. Hmm. Okay, here we go. Let's see what it is. Oh, it's a big word. Courage. Courage is a big word for the spring equinox. Definitely, if we're moving forward into anything worthwhile, we're going to need a little bit of courage because, um, you know, you've probably heard it said, courage is feeling the fear and doing it anyway, moving forward anyway. And if you're feeling the fear, then you know you're at the edge of something, you're at the brink of something, and you're moving into something worthwhile for you. Um, and so a little bit of courage can go a long way in participating in this new beginning that um, the spring equinox offers us. So I think um, I'm going to be courageous and take you right into one of the asanas that requires courage. One of the asanas where you do feel a little bit of a shake, you do feel a wobble, um, you feel the edge of yourself. And if you're going to master it, and it's an asana that certainly takes practice to master, if you're going to master it, you need to have courage. So um, I'm talking about crow pose. <laughs> Let me um, help you with that today. Let's talk about it. Um, it's an asana that takes courage because should you slip, often you land on your little crow beak. Um, and I've done it. I've face planted more than once on, in crow pose. Um, it, it's definitely one that brings up fear when you're first learning it. So one thing I would recommend, you see I've got some sand here for myself. That's going to work out nicely because if I face plant, I've got something a little softer to land in. But if you're at home, take a pillow and put a pillow on the floor. Let yourself have like that just little bit of compassionate support um, so you don't break your beak. <laughs> And um, the other thing that can be helpful is a block. And so I'm gonna start with it about this height. The thing about crow is your face has to come down to the floor. You've gotta get your face down in there. It's um, an asana that has chaturanga arms. It has a real strong engagement, like up the pit of the belly, almost like you're making a cat pose, you know? So if you kind of feel that a few times and pump into that a few times, you'll bring um, some action up in that will prep you for that asana. It's got a squeeze of the inner thigh. So even though the knees come up to the triceps, the action of the inner thighs is towards each other. That's gonna facilitate the rest of this lift of the bum. And you can see even if I'm kneeling and I squeeze my thighs together I start to draw the hips come up higher that's the feeling I'm gonna want in my crow pose so we'll come to crow pose if you need a little space in the hips we'll come from a goddess squat and so just sides set yourself up with your elbows in your hands to prayer and if you want to take a moment to find the action here you can do that too so as I squeeze my inner thighs into my arms I get a lift up of the butt and then all I need to do is action up from the inner zipper inside from the pelvic floor up inside to get the bum to rise and that's getting me um, you know warmed up it's teaching my body what needs to happen to be powerful in my crow all right take a breath because here's where courage happens you got to bring the butt up high I'm up on the balls of my feet and I'm bringing the weight into my hands and so many times what I'll see is that people fail to bend the elbows they don't want the face close to the ground because that's what brings up that flutter of anxiety 
And so if you're in that stage, then recognize that and really work with it. Give yourself, say, three months, three months nice from now and three months to now to just feel how the elbows bend and to practice a little push up so that you can come down lower and lower and bring your knees into your armpits. Don't even think about going any further, but if you'd like to, you can bring the forehead to the block. I like the face going forward, it's a counterbalance. So I'm gonna let you, we can move the block forward. I'm gonna let you have the block. Um, I'm gonna let you have the block and keep moving on with my conversation. I'm gonna need to squeeze the thighs together and pull the belly up to let the feet float. And as soon as I start to let the feet float, the body starts to tip forward. Let that happen. That's how you're gonna get there. It's a balancing. Okay, and so when you feel that tip forward, press into your middle finger. Press into your middle finger and let that middle finger be like a break so that you don't come into your face, okay? And if you come into your face, get yourself back up and try again. Shake it off, come back to me. So let's see what happens if I just take a little march. Bend the elbows, look forward, squeeze the thighs, lift the belly, right foot up right foot down left foot up left foot down a little march back and forth might be the next three months of my practice use the middle finger to create a little break and when i'm ready the big toes will touch ha huh. there's a crow pose for today but you know the truth is, and I said it a couple times, it's a process. And I think that's really the smartest thing to remember when you're working with something like courage. Courage doesn't always mean one leap across the ocean, like Hanuman's courageous big leap in one big step. More often than not, courage is a lot of little bitty steps, gradually, slowly, slowly, that get us there. And that's why it's so beautiful that Mother Nature gives us so many cycles to start over. She keeps reminding us, keep at it, come back to it, don't give up, keep trying, one little step at a time, one day at a time, one week at a time, one month at a time. And, um, you know, a practice of courage, a day-to-day -day practice of courage is what we need to move forward and to achieve what we're looking to achieve in life. So. I think I've chatted enough. I hope you have fun with that, um, practicing your crow pose. Um, and I hope you have fun working with courage this week. See what, see what it brings you. Namaste.